Let's hold our prayer, guys. <clears throat> Dear Lord, just thank you for bringing us all together here this morning, the Broken Yoke, and just bless the Broken Yoke for just having us here uh, to begin with, Lord. Just thank you for this wonderful day. Uh, thank you for the sunrise this morning. Uh, just bless our families weather away from us today. Just bless our speaker today. <clears throat> we pray. Amen. 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 Two announcements, you guys. We got uh, <laughs> Greg and I visited uh, Tr Trinity Worldwide uh, Reprographics yesterday. They have a speaker forum every Wednesday morning from 9 to 10. A great speaker yesterday, Dave, uh, from Horse Church in Marietta. Hit some, definitely hit some things down home with me, uh, for sure. Uh, I find that quite often that pretty much whenever I go anywhere, that they're speaking to me and and uh, everything applies in my life. How did they know? How did they know? <laughs> how did they know? How did they know I was going to be there? Uh, I, don't I don't know how they knew that, but yeah. Uh, so uh, visit them every Wednesday morning from uh, 9 to 10. And your printing needs. They are also a printing company. Um, business cards. They do a wide array of things. Brochures, booklets. Uh, and the biggest thing they do on the very bottom of the card right here is prayer. So if you need that, uh, use that company there, Marietta. Um, a couple other announcements. <coughs> Cornerstone, our home church, we have our men's, mes uh, men's monthly breakfast, which was Saturday, last Saturday. It's uh, last Saturday of every week. Um, every month, I'm sorry. Project Hope is coming up next Saturday. It's a uh, food distribution ministry that we do at the Cornerstone. We also have Project Touch, which is the first Thursday. Our men's group is kind of taking that on. Uh, we feed uh, a group of 35 guys or homeless people that are uh, put up in a hotel for a winter shelter. <clears throat> we do that. Um, also, Cornerstone's a 40 days uh, Bible study starts this next upcoming week. So if you're in a men's group or you haven't been in one yet or you want to get in one, it's not too late to see for that. Um, uh, as far as work goes, guys, I know last week we uh, went over a little bit on time, but if you have to go at any time, uh, feel free to just get up and excuse yourself. It's not a problem. <clears throat> and then cell phones, you can put them on vibrate real fast so it won't be an interruption to our speaker today. Without further ado, Chris Bowers. <laughs> Credit where credit's due. God, thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you so much for blessing me with all these great men, Father God. I just pray right now that you just speak through me. Let your word be heard, Father God. Reveal yourself to each one of us in a whole new way. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, man, yesterday I was at, uh, my wife and I were at a um, youth winter retreat for the kids at Linfield. It was a huge camp. We did a couple seminars and um, <clears throat> we spoke, I spoke in, um, in my seminar and did jujitsu and it was three hours of nuts, man. Like the ninth and 10th graders are like trying to herd cats. And there was like 30 of them and I'm like, oh man. And then they want to roll with me and I get punched in the face. I'm like, man, this is not MMA. You know, I, uh, so I'm beat up today. I'm tired. Got home at like 1030. Then all my ideas for today, uh, I had to write down. So I didn't go to bed until 12 or so. And then I didn't sleep. Um, so it's, it's been glorious. Uh, I just thank God for these opportunities. Um, but something that's been on my heart for, for the past few weeks is, is who we are as men and protection without controlling. So I'm gonna tell you the story about this guy. This guy had a wife and kids, he had three sons, his three sons had wives. His, his sons and his, his daughter-in-law and his wife loved him so much. They trusted him. He built this foundation upon their lives that, that was never shaken. He had this relationship with God that was just so one-on-one -on -one that he would just, he would speak to God and God would speak to him. And in this one time, God spoke to him. And it was, 
it was unbelievable. He goes to his family, goes, hey, this is what God said. And they're like, whoa, dude, uh, this time, Dad, maybe you're a little, you're a little nuts, man. I'm not going to lie. You know, so, so he goes out and starts telling people, hey, man, this is what God is going to do. Guys, just get ready, you know. And these people are like, dude, you're crazy. It, it's not going to happen. For years this went on. For years. And the ridicule that this guy got, the, the looking down upon, the names that was called to him. Then, not only that, the names that was called to his family. His kids, his, his wife, his, his son's wives, his grandkids, all looked down upon. You know what? If I were them, I'd be like, you know what, Dad? You need to chill, man, because this is, this, is, this is hurt my reputation now, you know? It's hurt my business. And he continued to tell the message, message that God's going to send rain. And his kids are probably going, Dad, we live in a desert. It ain't going to rain. You get it through your head, you know? And so, so he starts building this, this big ark, right? <clears throat> so now you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. But yet, his kids stuck by him. Over the years that he built this huge ship, and all the ridicule, all the crap that was talked to him, his kids stayed by him. You know, if I was one of his kids, I'd be like, Dad, you know, you're, you're, this one's out, out there. Um, just give me my inheritance. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just go out here, right? I'm going to walk away. But they didn't. They stuck by him. Why? Because he built this foundation of love, trust, and they knew they can trust him. They, they knew that he was going to protect them. And that was his whole goal is that he would protect his family. God allowed Noah to protect his family, protect the animals. He gave them that, that message, that, that uh, mission to protect. But never once did, did Noah control. He never controlled his family. If his, his family wanted to bounce, he'd probably been like, all right, well, you know what? <clears throat> you're, you're probably going to drown. Sorry. <laughs> but he never controlled them. So what he did, he let, he let God control it. God gave him, gave Noah the protection, and and then God controlled the whole situation, <coughs> knowing what was going to take place. And as men, this is what we're called to do. We're we're called to love our families, right? To serve them, to protect them, and it's not protecting about just physical and monetary things. Although that's good, but it goes so much deeper than, than just, you know what, hey, well, you know, if there's a robber, you know, I'll, I'll protect you, you know, I'll go out there first, you know. It goes so much deeper than that. Hey, babe, you know, there's a stranger over here, you know, I'll let him get me before he gets you. I'll let you get the rug, you know. It goes so much deeper than that, and oftentimes that's all we think about is, is, is that kind of protection. But let's be honest, what other kind of protection is there? There's, there's emotional there's emotional protection. There's spiritual protection. There's protecting of their, their whole dignity, right? That's ours, to protect them. That's what God's appointed us to do. But not in a controlling way. Dictator. Come on. How many of you guys work for a boss that's like a complete dictator and controlling? You know? Our families don't want to feel like that. So... How many of you guys have ever said, like, women jokes? Right? How many of you guys have ever been around people that talk about women or they're like, oh, man, this is stupid woman driver. She cut me off and she's an idiot and they're all like that. And, you know, or, or they're in your wife's in the car. What is she thinking? What is she thinking? She's going, oh, man, it's probably the way he thinks I drive. <laughs> And maybe, maybe she does drive like that. We just don't say it. <laughs> uh, then there's jokes. How many of you guys are surrounded by people that are like always telling bad jokes about women? Or, or they, they start talking badly about their wives. You know, like, you know what? This stupid... And you're like, 
ah, you start smiling, you're laughing, you're kind of like, yeah, give me a courtesy laugh. And, and what if your wife was standing right there? What if your wife was standing right there? What was she thinking? Because these words that are going to say come out of your mouth is a direct reflection upon her. She's going to sit there and go, oh man, what does he say behind my back? Does he really think about that, about me? Or, or something's on the TV and it's a swimsuit issue. And you're like, flip through it and you, you hold on that one for 30 seconds. And your wife's sitting there. What's she thinking? She's probably going, man, I don't look like anything like that. What, 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 what am I, who am I compared to this? You know? Or, or a girl walks by and you go, oh. you know, we've all done it. You're walking with your wife and you go, oh, there we go. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know? But that speaks volumes to your wife and she's like, oh, man, I'm so unworthy. I'm, I'm I'm just not good enough. That's the kind of protection that's more valuable than anything. That's going to stick. That's going to speak volumes to her. That's going to give her that dignity or take it away. That's going to give her emotional strength or take it away. Or spiritual strength or take it away. When we're in these conversations with guys and they start joking about women's about women or, or their own wives or talking badly about them, what do we need to do? Shut it out. Don't even give them the time of day. Just be like, you know what, man? You shouldn't be talking like that. You know? That's how we protect them. How do we protect our kids? We're called to be <coughs> pastors to our kids. We're called to shepherd them. Right? We're called to, to pre protect their well-being, their worth, and not, not in a controlling way, right? We don't control our kids. We shepherd them. Look at Psalm 23. The very end of it, or the beginning of it. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He, later on, he goes on and goes and says, Thy rod, the rod and the shaft, uh, staff, they comfort me. Why is that? It's because they, they like that discipline, they like that structure, but yet not control. This is who God's called us to be. This is who God's called us to be as men. Jesus protected without controlling. It's called free will. He protected us by, by dying for us, right? He protected us from going to hell. Who knows how much other things he protected me from that I don't even know about. Think about this. Think about the everyday life. What is God protecting you from that you don't even know about? There's probably going to be a lot of things. There's things I think about, about and I'm like, oh, man. That could have been all bad. A lot of times I'm sitting at a stoplight and my racing mentality comes in and I'm like, green light, hit the gas, go. Just go fast, right? How many of you guys are like that? You're just like, just go. And there's been often times where I'm glancing down at a second or I'm just not paying attention and guy runs a red light. And that's that half a second that saved me from getting hit. God's protecting, but yet not controlling. <laughs> Jesus protected us from come, going to hell. And it was our choice to choose to, to follow him or not follow him, right? It's our choice to protect our wives' dignity, their worth. Their, their emotions. It's our choice. Are we going to protect it? Are we going to let other people steal it? Are we going to steal it? Because that's what's going to show you if you're a man or not. 
Because it's not how many people you knock out, it's not how many people you, or how much you lift, but it's about protecting and love and prayer. Not only just for your family, but for your friends, for your coworkers, for your boss, the dictator above you. You gotta protect them. You gotta pray for them. That's what's gonna make you a man. That's what's, what it means to be a man. It's not, it's not anything else. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you so much that, that you came here and protected us. You protect us as we come and we go, as we walk through life. And sometimes we may know that you protect us in those, in those instances. But what about all the other times, God? Thank you so much for protecting us. Thank you so much for giving us the free will and not controlling us, not being a dictator, God, as so many people believe that you are. God, I pray right now that they would just know the truth, that you're the loving God that protects us. That will always be there by our side, always standing there. God, I pray right now that you would just protect us as we come and go, protect our families. If there's anything going on, Father God, I pray right now that you would just send your angels about us. Take any bitterness, anger, resentment away, Father God. I pray right now if anything that's hit home, Father, that they would just take it to heart and things would start to change. If wives have been mistreated in any way, and I know I've been guilty of that myself, if their dignity, their self-worth, their spiritual growth, if I've hindered that, Father God, forgive me in any way. Father, I pray right now, if anybody feels the same way, that you would just give them peace, give them hope, and give them a <clears throat> new eyes, give them a new perspective. God, be with each one of us as we come and go. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.